leaders, what are some of the most mission critical ob ob objectives that one should focus on to help their three teams survive through this phase? Yeah, I think a, a couple of them are, um, one is staying connected, right? Because we're just, not, as human beings, we are, we're social beings. Even if you're an introvert, we're still social. We're, we're designed by God to kind of be together, right? Uh, and so now that we're disconnected, it's really important as a leader that we're staying connected with our teams, whether it's a, we have people with, um, you know, check-ins and check-outs. So in the morning, they have a check-in call. And in the evening, they have a check-out call. Okay, we're gonna, so it just kind of keeps people connected during the day, right? Uh, it could be just having, you know, virtual happy hours. It could be just having some social time. Again, as the leader, you have to look at your employees as people first, then employees. So staying connected with them. How are you doing? How's the juggling there? I know your mother-in-law is staying with you and she's not doing well. Like, how's that going? I mean, so just making sure we're staying connected with as, as employees are really, really key. That's the first and foremost, that we have to be extremely human at this point in time and stay very connected. I'd say those, those two things are, are probably key. And then I, then I would say you have to stay extra focused, back to our adherence equation, extra focus on what's the purpose of your business. So many times in business, we have all kinds of activities and initiatives and projects going on. But this is the time to get to, back to basics and say, guys, this is what we're all about. This is how we take care of our customers. This is how we develop product. This is how we implement our, our solutions. Whatever it is, you have to get back to the core and double down your efforts and do whatever you do, the core of your business, do it better than anybody else. Strip away all that extraneous stuff that you've been working on. How do we do that better than anybody else? So I'd say staying connected to your people, but then staying connected to your purpose that would be really two critical business initiatives right now. Perfect. Sounds easy when put like that, yes. So, Lee, do you think, I mean, you know, right now we've been forced into it across the world, but do you think the trend of working remotely would stay on even after this? And how do we adapt to it efficiently? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to be really curious to watch how that happens. I know a lot of people are thinking, well, we're just going to, everyone's going to be remote from here on out. I really believe that people that are forced to work from home now are really going to be more passionate about staying connected and being in the office. I'll be honest with you. Where I do think it might be effective is companies re-looking at, you know what, do we need to have that business trip? Do we need to go out to the client site? Can we just connect with them on a call or a video? I think those things might be affected, but I think just in terms of teams needing that connectedness and seeing the efficiency that comes from that, uh, I don't think that it's going to be this huge trend that all of a sudden 50% of the workers are going to be, you know, working from home now. Uh, I think it's slightly going to move the needle of more remote workers, but I do not see it as a massive swing because I think people are realizing that, you know, we always want what we don't have, right? So when Absolutely. we're working in the office, hey, man, if I could just work from home and have all that flexibility and all that stuff, right? Yeah, well, now we're working from home, realizing, man, this is kind of isolating. It's a little depressing, and I'm working all day, you know. So um, I, I think we're, it's going to be more back to normal than we think it is. But clearly, there's going to be a, a little bit of a shift uh, back toward more remote workers. But I think most of that is going to be around travel-related stuff. In other words, yes. you know, so yes. not so much, you know, we're just going to make everyone work from home. That's my two cents. I have no idea, but I think that's what's going to happen. No, I definitely am missing our office meetings and you know those coffee breaks and just sitting and yeah. chatting together. So yeah, I guess I mean you just want to stay connected with people and uh, exchange the ideas. So I'm Absolutely. definitely missing office and you know being there on my desk through the day. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully. You're not alone. You're not alone. Yeah. So um, a little out there, but when do you think the economy would open up? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Was that? Do I think the economy? Oh, when do I think? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I wish I had a crystal ball for Robbie. I, I, I really, I really um, don't know. And I think it really depends on different countries and different areas that are affected. Like I'm in Dallas, Texas right now in the United States. Um, so like um, New York has kind of hit its peak on this and hopefully they'll be improving over the next few weeks. But in Dallas, we're not going to hit our peak for another few weeks. So I think timing is going to be different for even different cities within different countries and certainly for different countries. Um, so I really, I really don't know. I tend to be an optimist. 
So I think, uh, I think it, hopefully it's sooner than later. But I also think there's going to be hesitancy for people until there's a, vac- a vaccine to say, well, am I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm just going to go, go right back out there. Like, I'm not going to go to the, the basketball game or the grocery store or a crowded restaurant. I'm going to still be a little more hesitant about that. So I think it might be a little slower than we think. Um, but I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, we, we both live in very um, innovative cultures and countries that people still find ways to, uh, to boost business, even if people are kind of just still gradually getting back into their normal routine. So we'll, uh, we're both gonna have to wait and see on that one. Absolutely, but it's, it's amazing how businesses have still bounced back. You know, you never would have thought, okay, this is something that we can do. So instead of shutting down, people have changed strategies, totally, you know, brought business online, which was not the case. So yeah, I mean, what you can go through and just, you know, still come up winning is amazing. The human resilience that you see right you. now. Yep. You, you know, the old saying, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Absolutely. So, you know, companies are just having to figure out what do we have to do in it. And I, and I think, uh, what I love about this situation, I think it tends to bring out the best in the human spirit and the best in human innovation. And so we're, we're seeing that now. And so that means the future is going to look a little different than we thought it was going to look. But um, I think it's as a result of people just kind of putting their, their best brains and their best spirits into things. Absolutely. The connectedness and the willingness that people are willing, you know, to, I mean, to, to just connect with you and share their ideas. So we have this ongoing platform, you know, where we connect with people like you and people have been so sweet and, you know, open about this. So it, it's really been, uh, you know, a great experience so far. I mean, one uh, good thing to come out of this. We know it will. <laughs> All right, Lee. So I'll just tell my audience. So we're uh, going to the last question for Lee. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask, please. Yeah. So Lee, any final actionable pointers that you would like to give us that we can start on immediately? Sure. I would just, I, I'm just real big based on our experience with leaders. I'm going to go back to a previous point of your focus. So this is the time to stay really focused. What's most important to me and my business, stay focused on that. And also, Use this time. If you happen to have more time on your hands, how, how do I spend that time productively? How do I grow my skill set? How do I explore new things, expand my thinking, create expertise in new areas? So rather than looking at like, oh, gee, I'm trapped at home, this is probably a rare opportunity I have to kind of elevate my, my own thinking, elevate my own capabilities. So if we all took advantage of that, think of the powerful ripple effect that would create out into our business communities, out into our countries, out into the world. So uh, I would just say, seize this opportunity. And that's a mindset thing. I'm not trapped here. This is a new opportunity for you. So if I have that right mindset, I could seize that opportunity. If we all do that and just control what we, what we can control in this moment, I think it creates a great positive results for the world in general. Absolutely. Great. Lee, I'd just like to ask you about the other book as well, where, you know, uh, engaging the hearts and minds of all your employees. Sure. So just, just give me a one, you know, I mean, yeah. some gist of what you talk about in that book. Yeah, and that, that's, a, that's a book that's really about how do you, how do you uh, get the most out of your team? How do you get them performing the best? And it's really about six human needs. So there are three intellectual needs and three emotional needs. So as a leader, again, I've mentioned before, you have to see the person behind the employee. We're all human beings. We all have basic needs. So there are three intellectual needs we have to engage our minds the need for achievement, autonomy, and mastery. As a leader, if I could meet those needs for my people, I engage them intellectually. Then there are three emotional needs, the need for purpose, intimacy or connectedness, and appreciation. If I can meet those three needs, I engage their hearts. So together, if we engage their minds and their hearts, we get what we call passionate performance, people willingly giving their discretionary effort to help us achieve our goals. We get the performance from the mind side and the passion from the heart side. So, and that, that model, because it's based on human needs, tends to apply across generations, across industries, across cultures and countries. So um, we've used that since, I don't know, 15 years now, and it's been translated into lots of different languages. So it's really a model of leadership engagement, how to help leaders get the most out of their employees. But again, to do that, you have to be able to see the person behind the employee. That's the key. So Lee, I have a question for you. What are some of the things that management should not do at this time? (laughs) 
Okay, good, very good question. Uh, so they should not assume business as usual. Sometimes, oh, and it sounds goofy, but I've seen leaders say, you know, they kind of have a little bit of bravado. That's okay, guys, just keep on going. We're fine. I was like, this is really affecting people's health. It's affecting their financial stat, everything. So it's affecting their, their, their daily rhythm. You have to assume that this is really turning people upside down and you have to acknowledge that, right? So don't assume it's business as usual. Don't try to recreate everything in your business. I still say stay focused on what absolutely works for you. Now, maybe the way you deliver that service is different, but stay focused on what your core business is. Um, and then um, I would also say don't play the expert. So as the leader, like, okay, guys, here's what we're doing, like very cold, very kind of intellectual. You have to be human, right? So you, you have to be vulnerable. So don't make like, oh, I'm not affected. Everything's fine. So being vulnerable and, and, and honest and transparent with your team is absolutely key. And again, it seems obvious in this situation, but we see plenty of leaders trying to uh, just kind of be, you know, how are you guys okay? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Are you guys okay? It's like, well, it's, it, it affects everybody. So I think people, particularly the younger workforce, they want to know that they can connect with their leader as a human and know that he or she is going through some of the same stuff. So don't make it seem like you're on a, on a different level than they are. So get, you know, be on a peer level at this point with your people. Right. So that's just, uh, I think, uh, another one. Um, how do you apply this to big businesses? I mean, to entrepreneurs, this is fine when there's a smaller team, but how does this work, uh, you know, with bigger teams? Sure. We, uh, we work with lots of Fortune 500 companies here uh, in, in the United States. And so this particular equation of your focus times your competence times your passion has been applied in a lot of, a lot of notable Fortune 500 companies. So it's the same, it's the same principle because we're human beings. Bigger companies are just compilations of more people. So these, these concepts and these models we put in place are based on just our human dynamic. So we just have more human beings in these bigger companies. So it helps them keep more focus if they can figure out what's most important to them. And actually it, it's more effective in these large organizations because you can imagine a large organization has what, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 levels between the CEO and the frontline worker. So if they're not focused at the top level, you've got people at the front line going all kinds of different directions, right? So particularly this concept of the focus is really critical for larger organizations to have their strategy, to communicate it all the way down through the organization. And it never ends. You got to keep communicating, re-communicating. And then the competence is the same thing. And the passion is really important because we have to make sure our employees know what is it that we're, what we're doing? How, how do we make the world a better place? How do we appreciate your contributions? How do we keep you connected? Even though we might have virtual teams all over the world, or you don't necessarily see your boss. So, these concepts of your focus times your competence times your passion, in our experience, we, we built them for larger businesses. It just so happened that because they're based on naturally occurring human dynamics, that it applies to everybody. I know when I first wrote the book years ago, my mother, who was 80 something years old at the time said, Lee, I could really apply this to my personal life. And I knew at that time we had something because if you could see these concepts that work for larger businesses, and if they're transparent enough to apply to your personal life, then we know we've really captured the fundamental human dynamic. So, absolutely, um, absolutely. So, I think one more. How can I? Uh, Karan Bhat asks it. How can I make the best use of this present situation in a in a strategy level? Sure. I, again, I think this is that time to maybe step back, look at your business, don't lose sight of your core business, what you're all about. But we have a lot of people that are busy all day, but we also have some people saying you know what, things are a little slower now. I've got like time. So this is a great time to be able to just step back out of the flurry of the day-to-day -day business and say, okay, with this new dynamic, how does this shift maybe how we deliver our services? You know, how, how, we, how we develop our products. Um, so I think it's a great, a great time to do that. Gather your people up uh, virtually, of course, uh, to, to spend time doing that. Now, here's the, here's, the, here's the one caveat I would add to that. It's a little bit hard to predict what the next year or two are gonna look like, right? But we can at least say we see some underlying trends and some shifts happening in the economy, in, in the business market right now that give us a hint as to what things are gonna look like. So you make some assumptions about those and then you can still do some planning. And, and I would say, 
our companies, our clients like to have three-year plans, right? Well, in today's day and age, it might be, you know what, let's just figure out a plan for the next year, right? But like I said before, right now it's like, you know, just each week. But if you're really doing strategic planning, you might say, let's just think about the next six months for a year. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to predict in three years from now. So just maybe, maybe you reduce your time horizon and figure out and, and then know that you got to stay nimble with your plan. But I think this is a time to be able to step back and figure out how do we maybe have to reposition our business? And this is the time to do it. And I think if you're not doing it now, you're probably losing ground because most of the best companies are taking this opportunity to do that. So you can't, again, you cannot assume business as usual. Thank you so much for being with us. It's been such a pleasure and, you know, getting all those nuggets of information. I mean, absolutely priceless. Thank you so My much pleasure. again.